Welcome to Post Game on the Pitch. I'm Oz Vida Mara Ere, and we got the homies, the best of the best in Seattle soccer analysts. To my left is Stephen Agan of Radio Cascadia. To my first right is John Marshall of Radio Cascadia again. And then to my right right is Brandon Brown of Eli Sports. Correct, gentlemen? Yep. All right, got to get that right. All right, let's <laughs> let's go right now. It is 0-0 zero, zero, zero draw. Uh, Seattle, another draw. Sandra zero. Uh, Austin FC zero. Stephen, what do you take away from this? I think it's two points dropped at home for the Sounders and a bit of a disappointing end to their home stand. They end up taking five points across their three games here at Newman Field. Uh, after th taking three in the first, you have to imagine that they were hoping to, uh, to take at least six. All right, we're going to come back, obviously. As we from last week, the sky's falling. Is the sky finally falling now? Uh, yeah, I think you know. Last week you brought it up that you were concerned. I think it's maybe about time to push the panic button. Teams maybe figuring out the Sounders after that Atlanta game. And I think uh, we all said really, uh, you know, wait for Austin. And now that Austin's come and gone, I, you know, there is a concern. There's a lot of concern that this offense has started to falter. Uh, has started to be figured out by other teams' defenses. I think that is a big concern going forward. Uh, still the best goal differential in the league. Still have not conceded a goal from open play, which I think is going to be something the Sounders hang their hats on all year long. At this point, their defensive skill, but uh, it is a bit of a letdown from the offense tonight. Yeah, Brandon, I mean, well, you're 5-0-3. Yeah. Yep. Half full or half empty? Uh, I, would say I was half full last week. I think I'm a little more half empty this week. Um, like everybody said, it's... it's the defense is great, you know, not giving up any goals in the run of play, but the offense is just sputtering now. It's very flat. It doesn't look as dynamic as it used to be. And it could be that they're figuring out the formation now. It could just be that they overlooked Austin. It could be a lot of situations where you're at home. And you, we talked about well, this is the time to bounce back because it is an expansion club. Well, they didn't play like one today, and they really, you know, suffocated the Sounders offense. Right? And, Stephen, you brought this up in the press box. You said that part of this is they did underestimate Austin. I mean, is, do you really think that was the issue? And then please talk about their inability to break down in the in the in the last third. Underestimates a, a strong word. I think that <laughs> you <laughs> said it. And now you want to back off that we're on camera? Go no, ahead. I think, I think what happened for Seattle, you know, I think if you told them before the game that they'd have sixty percent of the ball and fifteen or eighteen open play crosses and you know win most of the duels and all that, I, I think that they would tell you that they thought that they'd score and that they'd win the game. The fact that they didn't makes me wonder if maybe they took it a little bit for granted that if they were able to control the game, if they were able to control the, the possession and the stats like that, that the goals would come automatically. And that's what we saw tonight. They didn't, and it was difficult work for them in the final third, and that was where they lacked sharpness. All right, now we're splitting hairs. <laughs> take them for granted. You know what I mean? Like, come on. What happened, John, in the final third? I mean, is that an issue for you? I, I'm, it's a concern for sure. I think that they did not connect as well as that we've seen them earlier in the season do. Uh, there were not enough. Uh, Christian brought it up last week, the third man running, making the run to the box behind uh, the first couple guys and the hold up play not being there in the final third. I think that was a little bit better today, but you still didn't have that third guy making the run consistently. You didn't have the service. Uh, through the box that was effective enough and uh, you know well placed enough and there wasn't there just wasn't that third man getting into the box enough uh, to make those opportunities and get more scoring chances uh, it's a real concern that that it's happened two weeks in a row uh, especially to an expansion team in Austin who is still finding their footing in this league I think this is a really great opportunity for Sounders to bounce back from last week's Atlanta game uh, going into this international break uh, and for them to fall flat it's, it's a really got to be a huge disappointment Brendan, why is that third guy not making the run or putting himself in a position to receive the pass inside yeah. the third? Well, I mean, it's, it's difficult to say why it's happening, but it, to go off, I mean, even when the, the third person comes and they talk about the service going through the box, every pass seemed to be behind all the attackers. It seemed like it was a cutback and then no one was there. And it seemed like just a, it was just a hair off. And sometimes that's just, you know, an in the mood thing. It's not a, it's something that's going to progress throughout the whole season. And But it's happened in back-to-back -back games now where it just seems like they're a hair off. It just seems like everything is just a little bit late in the service and everything like that. So it's, it's why it's not happening, I can't give you a straight answer, but it just seems like it's just a tick off. You're a soccer analyst. Why is, why? 
tonight the service was a little bit aimless, first and foremost. I think that Brad Smith had a really tough game. Uh, in the first half, Montero played a beautiful ball over the top for him down the left wing. He was in acres of space, and he just fell completely flat on the final ball, uh, and the chance was gone. And that happened several times for Sounders, primarily on, uh, on Brad Smith's side of the field, I think. But others were guilty as well, even Christian Roldan. Uh, either the cross was, as you said, Brandon, it was either under hit, it was either cut back to the, to the wrong spot. Mostly it looked to me like, like Sounders weren't exactly picking out a final man on the last ball. I think they were just hitting the ball across. I think it was a bit aimless. And, yeah. and you've got to pick out the last guy. It has to be the most precise pass of the movie. All right, not to say you're not a soccer no, 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 no. Ball, But I want to jump in here and say just, and then let you guys finish. But uh, I think that, look, if you look at Stefan Cleveland, the, the save he made today, he's sharp. I just, the Sounders are not playing sharp soccer. Correct. They really are not. And for me, uh, all right, for me, I think it's an issue. It really yeah, is. It is. So are they tired? And then what do you do in this two weeks that you have? We'll go this way and then we'll come back to you. Are they tired? And then what do you do? Yeah, I think you need a biggest thing. You got to get healthy. And, you know, the news that came out that Ladero and Stephen Fry aren't quite on track, what we originally thought. The Sounders are going to have to get over that as well. You know, Stephen Cleveland is stepping up in a big way. He talks about having Fry in the locker room has been really big. But Ladero is not coming back as soon as we thought. You know, we thought June was going to be it. Well, everybody's going to have to step up in that, you know, spot. And, you know, I think the excuses can't be, and they haven't necessarily made them, but they got to step up in the absence until that time is filled. Uh, so I think the break needs to be to get healthy and to get mentally fit again. I think that's a big thing is just mentally get fit and whether that's chemistry or whatever it needs to be, they just need that time to come together as a team and just be whole again once the international break is over. Yeah, I think uh, Schmetzer did bring it up in the postgame presser about, you know, subbing on or not subbing on, but uh, starting Montero over Bruin today wasn't a, a decision against Bruin in favor of, of a better Montero. It was really about getting ready more minutes, especially with three games in the span of uh, about a week once they come back from this international break. When, you, as, as you said earlier, no Raul, no Ariaga, no, probably no Smith. Uh, you're going to be missing important key players. So it was nice to see Danny Leva, Jimmy Madranda, uh, Freddie Montero all uh, get minutes today and, and play fairly well. Um, I think it, it is nice to see a young kid like Danny Leva having the confidence that he has had in these games and he has a couple of really nice passes in the last couple of minutes that he did get to play. Uh, I think we really want to see how those those type of players who are going to be getting more chances now uh, over this international break once we come back. Uh, I'm really interested to see how they develop uh, in this break and how they take that pressure uh, and responsibility uh, and play going forward to, to have success even when your international players are gone. Absolutely. Not only are you with Radio Cascadia, you are a Seattle Sounders charter member from day one. And I mean, they're five zero and three. Are we nitpicking here? It's a great start. I think it's fair to nitpick. I think it's fair to want them to, to reach their peak performance. Um, to get back to your first question, were they tired tonight? Uh, Brandon, I think you have a great answer there. I, you know, there there are multiple aspects to soccer. There are multiple sides to it. And if you look at the dual stat, if you look at the miles run for, per player in the midfield, that's all going to come out like a team who, who put in a ton of effort to the end of the game. But they weren't mentally sharp tonight. Yeah. And they weren't mentally sharp in the final third. The composure, the, uh, the wherewithal to pick the final pass, it just wasn't quite there. You, you can be tired mentally without having tired legs. And to me, that's what it looked like for Sounders, who were maybe a little out of ideas tonight. Brilliantly said, because we did have that debate, right? And that you got to get yourself in the position in that last, third. just like you're saying, in terms of mentally, because that's the thing about soccer. There's the physical part of it. There is the mental part of it. All right, guys. So let's, uh, parting words as we go around. So what... Where are you at with this team? Uh, not quite panic button mode because you can't panic on top of the West standings. And, you know, and I think this comes with success. You know, this is the pleasure that you have is you get a nitpick when you have a team that's a championship caliber, a caliber team. So I think don't hit the panic button yet, but there are things that really need to be fixed. Yeah, there's definitely early concerns to that the team need to address. But to be 5-0 and 3 with no Nico Ladero uh, and going into this break, having not conceded a goal from uh, the run of play. Traditionally, early in 600 seasons, we're used to talking about slow starts. We finally have a fast start this season, top of the stand Western Conference standings for the Sounders. I think there's still a lot 
uh, to be very positive about and see going forward. It's going to be a matter of how teams can adapt to Seattle and how uh, the attack can, can find the footing again. I think just on the theoretical level, if you're going to play a lot of defenders in your formation, like Sounders are doing, mm -hmm. you want to be solid at the back. Yeah. Right? And Sounders are 5 0 3, three goals conceded, none from the run of play. Uh, there's certainly room for improvement on the offensive end, but I think if you ask people in a vacuum, what are you looking to get out of a formation with, with five guys at the back? You're looking to be solid there. You're yeah. looking to not give goals up. And so from that perspective, you have to say the formation's been very, very successful. Uh, the question for me is, is how do they grow from here? How, now that they know that, that people can watch them on film and see what they do, how does this grow? What, what about for you, Mazda? What do you think? That's my hand. <laughs> reaching for the panic button. Yeah. Because how they grow, and they've said this a couple of times, is the passing. Yeah. Right? And Christian was frustrated. And it, this game was fine, but he talked about it. The ability to pass, because you have five guys there. So your ability to pass and send the wing backs up the flanks hasn't been happening. So they're going to have to get better at passing the ball and effective passing. Yes. And so that is going to be the growth. But you know what? I mean, 5-0-3, uh, absolutely. And I think Brian Smetzer and the team will get it done. Because, again, to your point, the fact that we're sitting, they're sitting 5-0-3 oh, and, and we're nitpicking, that's a luxury. Yeah. So thank you all for watching. Brandon Brown of Eli Sports, thank you. What do you got going next week? Anything? Uh, Metro League's coming down for basketball, so I'm uh, actually starting to get uh, yeah, winding down myself. I'm heading out to Chicago next week, so get myself a little break. <laughs> He's going to Chi Town. John, what do you got? Radio Cascade, anything coming up for on your end? Oh, well, we got episodes coming out uh, soon talking Sounders, Timbers, Vancouver Whitecaps uh, to all Cascadia. Uh, just also want to say eight games in a row without a, a goal from line of play is an MLS League record. Uh, that's a good bring it up. I, I think we'd be remiss to not mention, uh, as critical as we've been today uh, for Sounders' performance, uh, I think we do need to mention that they have quite the accomplishment of that. Absolutely, and so sounds like Radio Cascade is a little bit busy, right? <laughs> the next uh, few weeks here. You gotta let me get through my finals. Right now it's all about public finance and tax policy for me, unfortunately. <laughs> if you're looking for the really exciting stuff, you know where to find me. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, thank you all for listening. Uh, CascadiaSports.net, you can find stuff there. Radio Cascadia, and we talked about Eli Sports. So thank you all for watching and listening. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure and appreciate the insight and the knowledge that you bring. Thanks for having us, Maz. Absolutely.